welcome back to my channel and thank you for tuning in for another video so today i wanted to talk about negotiation and basically i think i had to off talking about negotiation after reading this book uh, i was recently i was recently reading this book and it just crossed my mind that negotiation is a very important skill to have because um literally we negotiate on a day-to-day -day basis like you negotiate your pay you negotiate um where you what you get in life with your partner with your kids with your boss and everyone you engage with in it's literally negotiation in each and every step of the way and i remember back uh last year i think the end of last year i attended this negotiation masterclass which i, I kind of like got a lot of things that i think were good nuggets and i could share those as well because I think most of my audience is in their age where they're probably working or something and if you're working, you probably have to negotiate your pay and there are a lot of things that you have to negotiate as well. So negotiation is like a, a good to have skill. So with that, let me get into the video where I'll be sharing the nature that I, I got from the negotiation masterclass that I attended last year, also the lessons that I've picked from the book that I'm recently reading. So first and foremost, the first thing in negotiation is to never accept the first offer that you're offered. Because in most cases, the person who's offering you the offer has the assumption that you're going to negotiate anyway. So they'll somehow give you the least favorable offer because they're kind of trying to give themselves room in case you negotiate, they'll have something to buffer on, you know. You know, I think it's the same thing when you go to buy things, let's say around Mwenge or Kariako and stuff. Usually you know the first price that you're offered is not the market price. It's the same thing in all areas, like when it comes to salary and a lot of other stuff, it works like that. In most cases, HR has a shield that you're gonna negotiate. It's more of like a psychological thing that like they know that you're going to negotiate, so they're not gonna give you the best offer forward. They're just gonna give you like an almost best offer hoping that if you negotiate they'll have room to play with because they have not given you what you deserve in the first place so that's the first rule of negotiation is to never accept the first offer that's handed just like play around with it and see what you could get for yourself and one of the main things that i've picked from from reading this book i think um is the fact that negotiation is very psychological and um, usually many people assume that we human beings are I mean like we make a lot of decisions having enough knowledge or like we are very reasonable beings but I think from reading this book and from reading many other books you can definitely see that human beings are very emotional beings like sometimes you assume you're making a decision out of knowledge or maybe out of importance but if you look at it closely, you're making the decision purely out of emotions, and in most cases, you are sub, uh, in most cases, your system two mind. I mean, like there's this thing called system two and system one from the book Think Fast and Slow something by this psychologist called Daniel. Yeah. So there is subconscious mind and a subconscious mind, but usually, your unsubconscious mind influences your subconscious mind. So sometimes you think you have thought the decision through, but the decision is made purely out of emotions. So yeah, I think you should also consider that, that human beings are very emotional beings. We don't have a lot of senses in decision making or anything. We, we are purely making decisions out of emotions. You know, like sometimes let's say you'll be offered a pay, like let's say your salary will be put on the table, but you would assume that you have thought it through and this is the best pay that you can get. And maybe you, you would accept that without negotiating. But in most cases, you are accepting that without negotiating because you have, uh, let's say, fear, which is emotions. You have fear of like losing the offer or let's say you're, ju you're just worried that maybe this is the best that you can get, you see? So though you are lying to yourself, assuming that you have thought that thing through and this is the best thing that you can get, but you're just making the decision out of feelings. So it's very important to negotiate, you know, like put your feelings aside and put facts on the table and negotiate so as if there is a possibility for you to get the best offer, get the best you can get out of every situation. I know even I myself, I'm still like working on this and I think like negotiation is something that 
uh, I'm practicing as in as of recently. Even I myself, when it comes to my first job, I did not negotiate my salary and I was very much underpaid. You know, I think I was six months into the job when I realized like um, other people with the same job that I had were making like three times my pay for the same role, actually for for a minor role because I was doing more duties than most people, but still I was paid like three times lower just because I did not negotiate my salary. So this this topic is kind of sensitive to me because I've been through it, you know. I've felt the effects, which is why I kind of like wanted to like know how to play the game as well. So yeah, that's a long introduction. Now I'll be sharing um, the nuggets. Actually, I, I took some notes from the masterclass that I attended um, last year on negotiation. So I'm gonna like share the nuggets that I got from there. And this masterclass was basically based on like negotiating your salary. So the first lesson that I got from the masterclass was know what you want from that career and what your deal breakers are, you know. So I think most of us accept jobs just for the sake of having the job and which is where when it, when, it's com when it comes to negotiating, you don't know what to negotiate for because just the fact that you got the job kind of like solves everything. It, 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 can, it kind of like you, you get the situation where the job is the end goal. So there's no point in like negotiating and all of that. But I think like knowing what you want as out of that career is one thing that will give you like the courage to negotiate and all of that. Let's say like I want my job to be able to cover my living expenses, you know. So let's say I do like my estimations of how much I need to be able to live the life that I want to live in a month and then I'll see how much the job is paying me. If they're not if they're not correlating then I have now I know by myself that this is not what I would want from this job. So like I have room to negotiate. Also like it's like knowing that this is not the job for me. So it's I mean it's just it's it's more of like the first step towards understanding if like is this the right job for you because if you want your job to be able to cover your living expenses and then you're working at a job that does not cover your living expenses that kind of like shows that you probably need another job or you need to negotiate your pay and if you cannot negotiate your pay maybe you should just focus on looking for another job so yeah that's the first thing the second thing is um as you negotiate your pay or your salary, see the possibilities of getting more than just money out of it. So this is the one mistake most of us make in negotiation, you know, like especially when you're negotiating our salary. We assume that money is the only thing that our employers can give to us, you know. Let's say if they're paying me like 200k and then I want them to pay me 400k, you know. So I'll be having that perception that monetary value like the money is the only thing that they can give me if they cannot move the 200k to 400k this negotiation is not a success but that is not it sometimes you can see if there is any other way that your employer could pay you other than just increasing your take home salary you know because there are a lot of ways that they could pay you let's say for instance there's maybe they don't have the budget to like increase your pay other possibilities would have been like um okay fine since you cannot increase my pay can you at least minimize my living costs for instance i know someone whose housing is covered by their office so that was a negotiation point like if you don't want to increase my my salary then I would like for you to pay for my housing so the company pays for her housing other ways you could ask for other things you could ask for is like um, for the office to cover let's say for instance your airtime or your transportation or like to increase your NCCF contribution because as it stands um, with NCCF contributions like the company has to pay 10% and the employee has to pay 10% because your 10% is cut from your pay, you could ask your employer as a negotiation point to pay the whole 20% of the NCCF contribution, which means you're saving yourself the 10% cut of your pay. So you just have to see if there are ways to pray around it. Let's say they don't have an extra budget for salaries, 
but they could have extra budget for airtime or like transportation or housing or nccf contributions whatever so just see if there's anything in that scope that could work for you and just like work with them another point is um it's easier to negotiate with more information at hand so gather as more info and be confident about your points you know so i think negotiation is easier to handle it when you have like points in place so if you have been with a job for a while it's important to track your wins like i've seen this a lot of like, on those like corporate tiktoks people usually say like always oh, track your your wins on corporate because the day you're going to negotiate your salary those will be like your touch points like I brought so-and-so customers I did so-and-so which saved the company so-and-so and it's also important to learn how to see the value in your contributions let's say um, you discovered a system which has helped the company uh, minimize so-and-so cost and by minimizing that cost that means that you have saved the company huge amounts in the long run you know so you just need to know how to uh, to see those things and how to debate them so that you could like um, make your points when you're negotiating your pay and something else I did learn from this masterclass is that um, you know so when it comes to negotiation and like pay increment you can only negotiate as much and usually most companies do not have a lot of loom when it, when it comes to increasing salaries but usually most companies have a lot of budget for new employees so when you have negotiated your pay and you have not been successful the most easy way to increase your salary is just job hopping like moving jobs so just move from one company to another because there is a bigger new employee budget than there is salary increment budgets so i mean like this is one of the things that i've come to re to realize or become familiar with like later on in life and i wish someone had told me earlier that like how much job hoping could pay con how much job hoping could contribute to your salary increment you know which is why like i like talking about stuff like this because i think it's just uh, it's just with talking about these stuff that some of us are becoming aware of these stuff and then we see how they're helpful for us because i remember even i myself at a certain point at my previous job i felt like i was not paid enough and i wanted to i was in the process of negotiating my pay and then i was having a conversation with this friend of mine okay she's a friend but also she's like a bit more experienced when it comes to career because she's a bit older than me so she has like more career-wise experience so i was like talking to her about it and like complaining literally <laughs> and she was like you know what Mary? um so if you're gonna negotiate your salary let's say how much do you think they could pay you i was like um, i don't know but i think they could increase at least like um 30 percent or 20 percent and she was like and would that even still be enough for you like is that the amount that you're looking for because i think also you have to take a look at your company's pay structure because most companies have a cap like do you think they're able or they're capable of paying you the amounts that you want if you think they're not capable the best way to move forward would just be to change jobs which is what I think I came to realize. So after learning all these all these things about negotiation and all of that, and as I was preparing for like to go for my negotiation, now you know, I wanted to go negotiate my pay and all of that. Is when I became aware of the knowledge of like job hoping. Like you know, sometimes it's easier and it's more convenient to increase your pay by just changing jobs, because most companies have a bigger budget for new employees than budget for like salary increments it's just what it is so that's also another take home for you all right another point that i learned from the masterclass was um always know the skills that come th that come with you so as to determine what's your value and what you need to be paid you know so sometimes it's very easy to undermine how your skills are benefiting your company but i think it's with knowing the skills that you possess let's say there are a lot of people i think these days that they have like diverse skills but sometimes we feel like just by exposing that we have so many skills we kind of like show that we are not focused in one field 
and we kind of like assume that is a bad thing but that is a very good thing because most companies want someone who could like be fluid so the fact that you have like a, a lot a big range of skills it means they should pay you more because in case of anything you're the one who's going to be covering that anyway so i think it's just like knowing the value of the skills that you possess and being careful and being like confident in defending those skills and like knowing what these skills could contribute for the company like putting a value to your skills you know somebody could easily say like oh digital marketing jobs are very easy it's just like posting and taking pictures and posting and taking pictures but it's not just that brah it's not just that and if you have confidence in the skills that you have and you know the value that um company displaying does for the company the value that reach has for the company the value that good impressions has for the company um even like pr and all of that things because even social media is a big has a big impact on companies pr so i think it's like knowing the whole range of things and the value of skills that you possess that will give you the strength to begin the pay that you want from them because then you'll be talking from like value perspective like I have so and so skills and they're going to bring so and so value and I think this value is worth this much, you know. Yeah, so that's that. Um, another thing is to take time to learn what others are paid for the same role around the other industries because I think sometimes it's easy for you to just settle with the pay they have, kind of because i think salaries and money these things are not very common topics in many areas they're kind of like almost the booze so it's so hard for people to know like how other people are paid for the same roles in same industries or even different industry but i think if you get a chance to talk to somebody who's who does the same job mm -hmm. as you and to at least know the estimates of the amounts that they're paid could kind of like give you an insight of the description that there is because i think it's with knowing the description the differences that you kind of like know is are you fairly compensated or is the pay that you're getting not fair like is there room for you to negotiate or like is the amount you're asking for possible for the job that you're doing? I, th I think those kind of talks are important so as for you to have like um, all that necessary facts that you need for your negotiation. So another point that I learned from the masterclass was that mm, the person you're negotiating with usually has some perception about you or your situation. Best way to handle that is to bring up the situation and control the narrative so i know most employers like especially i think i know there are companies that purposefully hire new graduates so that they could minimize their uh their human capital cost because they know new graduates are kind of like they just want anything going so they could just accept as minimal pay as possible so they go for that that probably works for them i don't know but um, what this point is trying to say is that because most people do their research before the negotiation, you also have to do your research before the negotiation because if they have some information about you that they could use against you in the negotiation, then you're, in, you're going to lose in this. But if you have also done your work and maybe let's say, let's say in a situation where, where you're negotiating for your salary at a place where you have worked for a while, and let's say maybe you did a certain mistake back then which if the hr does i mean the hr could kind of like hold it against you but i think if you know that beforehand you should kind of like try to bring that up and like explain it in a way that it would work in your favor because the minute they bring it up it most likely they'll control the narrative and if they control the narrative that thing won't work in your favor very much so if you know of anything of that sort that could work against you try to bring it up yourself and control the narrative like change the perception from that it was bad and then like try to get the good thing out of it I hope that makes sense another point is um, know what is expected from you so that to better understand your performance and be aware of your performing i think this was the biggest this is the biggest um corporate red flag when you have a job with no kpis 
best believe you're gonna be overworked. So I think KPIs are good because KPIs can help you know when you're underperforming or when you're overperforming. Because uh, let's say your KPIs are to get like five clients every month. So when you have only signed three clients, you know that you're underperforming in that month. So you know that you need to work on certain things, you know, to where to improve and all of that. And when you know that you have to bring five clients every month and then maybe you're consistently bringing in 10 clients, you know that you're overperforming and probably you need like to be paid for that. So I think KPIs are good because they kind of like help you know, like, have you reached the target? Like, even if when you're going to negotiate, like, are you worth the negotiation that you're trying to put forward and stuff like that so it's important to like know your kpis and all of that also i know some jobs have very vague kpis if you have a direct manager i would suggest like asking directly for your kpis so that you like know that i also think kpis are good for yourself as well for your even just for your i mean self-esteem and stuff like that because i think with jobs with no kpis it's so easy to feel like you're not productive and all that because you're almost doing everything and then you don't know what is impactful what is not you're kind of like just juggling it around but if you have clear kpis it's so easy for you to know the value that you have brought in you know so last but not least is to always see if there's other gains uh that you could gain from that job like if there are things that you could learn or if there is like some growth that could happen from that that could also be a good negotiation point let's say you want them to you're going to negotiate your pay and they have not agreed on that you could also like negotiate for them to pay your school fees let's say to go for your master's degree if they agree to that that would also be a win and i know there are some jobs that actually cover that so even if you're not paid an industry standard but if they kind of like cover your school fees if you want to go to school or they kind of like pay for you to learn some skills which are useful that could also be something of gain to you so just see if there's other things that you could learn from the job other than just um other than just the pay itself so if there are any other things that you could learn for, for that that is also good yeah so don't just have like a one direction look into this negotiation thing just see around around it if you could just like make the most out of every situation that you're in all right guys so that's it for this video thank you for joining me and i hope this video has been useful don't forget to join my little community and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to share this video to anyone to whom it might be useful thank you guys and i hope to see you again bye bye